Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to today's VentureBeat webinar, The Secret to Successful FTP Ad Monetization, the Analytics Approach, brought to you by VentureBeat and Delta DNA. I'm Wendy Shuckert. I'm going to be your moderator today, and I'm producing the event. Uh, if you have, uh, I'll be guiding you through the event as well. So I'm just going to, we just have a few announcements before we begin. First, this, audience, this webinar contains audience polling. Complete the polls when they appear and click Submit. We thank you in advance for your participation. The slides are going to advance automatically throughout the event. You should have seen it advance one already. Now, if you want, you can download a copy of the slides, and that is in the attachments button up above, and then you can download a copy of the slides there, as well as there's a couple of other goodies in there, and including the study that we're going to be talking about today, if you'd like to uh, have that out in front of you while we talk. If you have any questions or comments or at any time, go ahead and you can use the questions button up on top of the video window and ask questions to our panel, and I'll be watching for those live during the event. If you have any technical issues, click help, and you can uh, go into the ratings box and click help, or help uh, me, is depending on your browser, and submit your question there. You can also submit a question through the portal as well. And now I'm going to bring in our panelists. First we have Mark Robinson. He's a the, uh, from Delta DNA, and we also have Dean Takahashi. Dean is from VentureBeat, and he will be joining us with some color commentary as well as interviewing Mark as well. So, Mark, I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, please take it over. Great. Thanks, Wendy, and uh, nice to talk to everybody today. Um, those of you that know us at Delta DNA will 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 know that we're kind of interested in engagement and in 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 app purchase in free to play. We're incredibly interested in player experiences, um, segmenting players into different types of behaviours, and using personalization to make um, games responsive. Now, um, let me get to the right slide here. So. Um, Actually, building on on that approach, um, which is all about, as I say, analytics and personalization to to make the game responsive, we started to think 12 months ago about um, ad serving. Obviously, ads are an incredibly important part of the game economy. Um, you know, ads can be up to 50% of uh, of the overall revenues that are generated from games. But like you know, in-app purchase and some of the mechanics that are very common in free-to-play, if we don't think about ad serving um, in an intelligent way, then it can potentially jar with the, with the player's experience. So we were thinking that you know this is an important aspect of the economy, and really we should start to think about you know how ads and in-app purchase and engagement all live together within the free-to-play environment, and actually bringing analytics and metrics to play to build great playing experiences and to and to balance these sometimes you know, competing um, different aspects of, of the gameplay. So that's what we've been looking at um, in developing the Delta DNA platform over the last 12 months with our, our new smart ads functionality. And you know, really what we wanted to do during this webinar was tell you a little bit about that approach tell you a little bit about our sort of thoughts in terms of how ads are used within games, what is best practice um, and where the industry is at, but also present to you the findings of a, of an ad, of a survey that we did amongst um, a range of over 100 developers that kindly give us their time to, to tell us about their experiences using ads and, and how they go about monetizing ads in the game economy. And we find some really in, in, in insightful stuff there that we, we really wanted to share with you during during the course of this webinar. But first and foremost let me let me give you a bit of context before we get on to the survey results. You know obviously um the free to play um the free to play um part of the games industry has been growing rapidly, especially over the last sort of four or five years. And really with that um, evolution of online gaming um, and, free and learning to build great free-to-play experiences, you know, analytics has been on an evolution as well. It's probably fair to say that you know, going back four or five years, dashboards were the state of the art for analytics. So, you know, many companies knew their game performance in terms of ARPA dies and uh, retention rates and um, social factors. 
but really moving to deeper insights and then moving further on to real-time personalization is something that we've seen certainly the, the industry and, and our clients really grasp um, very tightly to really um, make sure that every game that is deployed out there um, gives players a great playing experience and means that those games um, reach their potential. Um, so the use of data to really understand the different behavioral segments that you've got in your game and then making that game responsive to those different players so that we're supporting um, players with a, with a great, great experience to them is really where the industry has moved in terms of the use of data and how games then respond to, to giving those players the experience that they, they want and, they, and it's going to keep them hanging around. Um, one of the ways that we kind of talk about this is uh, using this chart here, which tells you about how a, a, a new player will come into a game and they'll download the game on the left-hand side. And then really our job as game designers, game developers, and analytics guys is to keep players between two extremes. Um, on the one hand, anxiety. You know, players do leave games because they are uncertain of the environment. They're uncertain of what they're meant to do. They maybe haven't followed the tutorial clearly. And they, and, you know, we see time and again that players leave games relatively early in their gameplay because they're unsure of that environment and they suffer from, you know, anxiety because of that. The other aspect of this is, um, you're completely contrasting. We can see that different types of players, maybe more expert players come into the game and feel that they're not sufficiently challenged. You know, they will pass easily through the first few missions and um, you really won't get um, enjoyment from the game because it, it's too easy. So, you know, it's, it's tough and free to play. We all realize that, that we're trying to actually balance uh, um, an experience for actually very different um, types of players. Um, you know, there are novice players that might leave, leave the game because they're uncertain. There are expert players that might leave the same game because they don't feel that they're challenged. And this is really where personalization, um, monetization, and engagement all can start to live together to play you know, an important part in delivering responsive experiences and keeping those players in the game. So you know, one example of that, and this is... Uh, something that we work with our clients a lot using the Delta DNA platform, is to be able to define players in terms of their behaviors and make the game responsive to those behaviors. So, for example, this is, an ex this is an, a, um, a, a player that's come into the game. We've served them through the, the in-app messaging in Delta DNA to in-app purchase offers, which have been declined. From that feedback, that direct real-time feedback in the game, then we've decided that this guy is going to be a grinder, and we've attached a segment, grinder segment, to, to the, this individual player. And now that we know that this guy is, is, is going to behave in that type, then the question becomes, what are we going to do with that player in terms of their engagement and their value to the game? So, for example, a grinder um, segment, they will generally not um, respond to in-app purchase. We've seen that they've de already declined offers. But they're engaged with the game. They're showing really good, strong engagement and progressing through the game. And therefore, the obvious strategy for monetization is an ad-based strategy, which mixes, you know, maybe mixes interstitials and rewarded ads. So... You know, the format and the placement and the density of ads then become a consideration and using analytics to get that balance right is, is key and, and what our clients do using the Delta DNA platform. But that gives you one example of how, you know, in terms of really op optimizing the, the revenue and the engagement within your game environments, we can use um, the Delta DNA toolkit to really distinguish different types of players and then give them a monetization strategy that is very precise and very orientated around their playing style. You know, we know that some players are responsive to in-app purchase. We know some players are responsive to ads. We know the sorts of um, experience that players want to have. 
so being very targeted in how you deploy these different strategies is going to make your game the maximum success it possibly can be. So taking that approach and combining retention, combining in-app purchase, and combining ad surfing, then leads us to you know, a, a, a natural conclusion. When we started to talk to our, our clients, we saw that actually um, most of them saw ads as you know, a necessary part of the game economy. They were very concerned about whether ads um, were um, going to give problems with retention and engagement. Um, they were also very concerned to protect their in-app purchase revenue um, uh, uh, and make sure that the ads were not jarring to the, to, to the experience overall. So what we saw from a typical client in our platform was a very a cautious approach to ad serving. Um, our clients tended to um, leave it quite late in the gameplay to start serving ads, maybe session 10, maybe 15, maybe even 20. They would certainly um, carve out the in-app purchase, the spenders, from the ad serving to protect those players from, from, from the ad um, from the from the ads, and um, then um, you know, what that delivered was you know a, a pretty cautious approach. It meant actually that potentially there was quite a lot of ad revenue that was left on the table. You know what we have been looking at in terms of uh, the smart ad strategies within the Delta DNA platform was to see which players were going to be ad responsive and then start to deliver those ads into their um, playing life cycle earlier than was the normal standard approach. We wanted to actually validate some of those assumptions, and we actually wanted to understand a lot more about how developers um, approach the whole general area of ad serving. So we commissioned a survey. Um, as I said before, we got over 100 you know, very detailed responses from individual developer studios, and we're really grateful to the people that spent the time to give us this you know, vast wealth of information that we're, um, we're about to share with you. Um, so just, uh, just to sort of um, regroup before we go into the, um, into the survey results, you know, we are seeing much more sophisticated um, approaches to you know, to ads. We can we can use analytics to start to understand format, placement, density of ads. We can do that for different um, types of segments. So the toolkits now really do exist to have a more sophisticated approach to ad serving. Um, and what we are seeing in the marketplace. Um, anecdotally from our clients is still quite a cautious approach. So that's the context that we, we, we um, carried out the survey within. And now I'll take you through some of the individual findings that, that we got from, from some of the, the key dimensions we were interrogating in the survey. So first of all, we wanted to, to talk a little bit about format. Ad serving has moved on as an industry, especially in the in the last 12 months, from you know, mainly being interstitials and banners um, to more um, engaging formats, rewarded video, non-rewarded video. And really, when we asked our our um, survey respondents what sort of formats they were using, interstitial was still overall the most common format of ad. But it was really interesting to see that actually, when we looked at the different combinations, people were generally using a combination of rewarded and interstitial. And to us, this seems smart. You know, rewarded ads do um, do um, improve the playing experience for certain types of players. We see that novice players actually respond really well to rewarded. Um, they appreciate the um, extra resource that they can give, especially at key parts of their playing life cycle. Maybe they're running out of resources far too early in the gameplay. You know, um, you know, maybe they they are engaged with the game, but they still need to figure out their strategy. But they're not willing to 
actually spend money yet. So rewarded ads are a great engagement mechanism um, to enable players to continue playing who are not ready to spend yet. And certainly delivering rewarded earlier in playing life cycles is something that you know, we, we see as a strong strategy. Also, rewarded ads are, are quite often can be used as a preliminary to converting people to paying players. So you might be able to, using rewarded ads, introduce inventory, um, you know, introduce people to the store, and really get get them a good sense of what it's like to be a paying player and contrast that with a non-paying experience through the gift of um, of resource following um, consumption of a rewarded video. So certainly, you know, we're we're keen um, in terms of what rewarded ads can do for the playing experience and how to use them purposefully to, to augment that playing experience. One thing, obviously, to be concerned about is you know, um, overconsumption of rewarded ads can damage the economy. So there is a natural sort of threshold in terms of the density of ads, um, and that is, a, that is obviously another part of the, the analytic um, evaluation of, of what the right balance of rewarded ads are for various different players. But that just seemed to be an interesting movement in the industry where combinations of rewarded and interstitial were certainly the, the, the most common um, approach by the developers filling out the survey. Next, we asked about confidence. and We asked everybody you know, how confident they were feeling about their advertising strategy. And this is really striking because you know what we see here is that there are very low levels of confidence. Um, you know, in, in this chart you can see that nearly 80% of people have have low levels of confidence. Um, this is where um, we ask people to rank their their confidence on a scale of uh, one to ten, and everybody in green that says yes they're confident they are scoring eight or above out of ten. The average actually is uh, just over 50%. So, you know, if you think about that another way, it's pretty much the same as uh, flipping a coin. Um, and so, uh, the confidence levels in, in in advertising strategy across the developers who filled out a survey is really no more than a 50/50 random flip of a, of a coin. And certainly, one of the things that we need to do better is to build that confidence. And we see that you know, analysing the data really getting clarity on what ads are working and what players are working for is one way to dramatically build build the confidence in um, in your ad strategies overall. One of the questions leading on from that then is, you know, why is confidence so low? And this really does shed some light on you know, what developers really want to make sure that you know, the ad strategies are delivering the player experiences that that they that they really want their players to have. We've highlighted in the slide here um, the five top returns in terms of the rating. This is a this is a rating from one to five, with five the, the most extreme. And really, the top concerns about in-game advertising that developers fed back to us were, you know, in terms of um, the highest, there's low um, ECPM rates. That are attracted, you know. Obviously, um, you know, uh, ha having having a decent uh, mediation platform so that you can you can understand which uh, networks are strong in different territories, different formats, and you can obviously make sure that you're fulfilling your impressions through through working through a basket of um, strong partners um, in 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 the ad network supply chain is important. Um, biggest concern overall was the adverse effect on player retention and I think there is a very strong feeling out there that you know, ads do get in the way of the gameplay very strongly and the industry needs to find a way to preserve that ad income but also make sure that it's not at the cost of unacceptable retention. The, um, the three um, other aspects that are shown lower down in, in the slide are all around data. This is really um, interesting to us, given that you know, we spend a lot of our time looking at data, analyzing 
um, analyzing behaviors with our clients uh, using our platform. Selecting the most effective ad format, where to place the ads in the game, setting ad frequency to players, all of these point to a lack of transparency in the data, which ads are being res um, response responded to, which ads are adding value, uh, uh, you know, and one of the th one of the things that we've been working hard on at Delta DNA is to provide some better transparency into you know, which ads are working and how to balance the ad strategy across your game. Um, the Smart Ads platform combines a targeting of players, understanding which players are ad responsive and which players are in app purchase responsive, with truly independent ad mediation so that you can work across a number of um, uh, ad networks and get that direct data feedback so that you can evaluate which ads are working, which ads are being responded to, and which ads are actually causing you a problem in terms of retention. So that real clarity of um, understanding and direct feedback from the players is vital to making the right decisions about about your ad strategy. And really the strong feeling is out there in the industry that that data doesn't exist um, clearly enough um, for um, for developers to move forward confidently in their in their ad strategy. So, I mean, hey, Mark, the other, other ask. I have a question sure. on that. Like, um, do you do you get the sense that that um, kind of uh, concern is common among both sort of the veterans of of using ads and uh, among developers and and the people who are just sort of brand new to it? Yeah, I mean, I think I think there's an uh, an evolution here, Dean. Um, you know, there are there are companies with, you know, larger companies, I guess, with more resources that are able to dedicate the time to start to to figure this stuff out. And you know, a lot of this is um, sometimes test and learn and experience and trying things. Um, you know, it's a it's a confusing landscape out there. There's hundreds of ad networks. You know, all with their strengths and weaknesses, all with um, you know different sort of technical considerations to think about, and actually you know it's tough for the the new guys uh, or even the sort of middle to smaller smaller guys to really spend time to analyze all of the the, the marketplace, understand which partners are are going to be good for them. And, and really to keep on top of this stuff that, that we see time and again across our client base is really the, the biggest constraint here. And you know, one of the things that we've been working hard on is to make that easier by putting all of the data in the same place, i.e. in the Delta DNA platform, and giving that sort of transparency in terms of the feedback mechanism. So I think you're right that this is an evolving um, uh, you know, an, an evolving situation, but Largely, the confidence layers are, are pretty low across across the board, and you know we can do better overall. Great. Okay, so let's let's cut into this data a little bit, and we're going to draw out a couple of um, interesting dimensions to to get in and amongst um, you know, what particular strategies individual um, developers are deploying here. So the first cut of the data that we thought was really interesting was looking at larger games. Larger games, and this is a, this is kind of reiterates the point that Dean just made, um, have more confidence in terms of the, the ad strategies that they're deploying. We see that larger games often um, deploy segmentation strategies you know by what what we mean by that is that you know they will split players out into groups and vary their ad consumption based on those groups the simplest segmentation strategy is to carve out the paying players the in-app purchase players and um, not serve ads to those guys but you can be more sophisticated in terms of the density of ads that you send but send to different segments. Um, so you know, one of the things that we see for, for very big games is that um, you know, they have um, 
uh, more confidence in terms of the the ad um, the ad strategy, but they're still not aggressive um, in, in terms of delivery of that strategy. The the actual um, the actual deployment of ads is still relatively cautious, and um, you know the ads are generally later later in the gameplay. Um, so that that was interesting to us. The, you know these very big games move ahead with confidence. They have built a lot more control around the ads, but still still default to a, a pretty cautious approach, which actually you know, potentially leaves quite quite a lot of money on the table. And you know, by thinking a little bit more about the different player segments, predicting which players are going to be responsive to different ad formats, getting the placement and density right. And what we've seen through our analysis and use of our platform is that there generally are many more impressions available from, from individual games based on um, the, the feedback that we get in terms of ad responsiveness. So the next um, part of this is looking at you know, individual approaches towards advertising, and we're going to start to cut into data um, in in a couple of different ways. So, if you think about approaches, first off, um, we've already talked about one of these approaches, which is segmenting players. You know, segmenting players can be a basic in-app purchases versus non-purchases. But you can get more sophisticated in terms of segmenting, some more behavioral stuff perhaps. Um, novices are responsive to rewarded ads. Experts don't like ads getting in the way of their gameplay. You know, that is something that can be deployed very early in, in the game and um, ad, advertising strategies starting from session one and, and thereafter. So you can get a good handle on behaviors right from the get-go in games and really start to deploy ad strategies very much earlier in the gameplay than is common right now. Um, we asked about the density of ads. So typically, serving one ad or less per session is is where the industry is at. You know, relatively cautious approach, I guess. You know, certainly, you know, there was a small percentage of players, as you can see in the bottom line of the chart, that were serving more than five ad adverts per session session that's less than half the guys that were serving one or less so you can see that you know five ads per session sounds like a little too much maybe too extreme and probably the truth the right balance is somewhere in the middle but the industry tends to um, steer towards a cautious ad approach one advert or less per session carving out the the pairs certainly something that is common and we saw an, an interesting approach, which is you know, 25 percent of, of our developers did start to show ads in the first session. That means that 75 um, percent are not showing ads in the first session, and certainly we're seeing that you know, 70 percent and above of, of developers are actually starting their ad strategies quite late on in terms of sessions. So you know, this is all pointing to a cautious approach to advertising. Um, necessarily cautious potentially through a lack of feedback data um, to measure the advertising impact um, but also the the conclusion from that is that potentially leaving money on the table where um, you could increase the ad monetization significantly by making sure that you're being sophisticated about your segmentation and, and really balancing the format, the placement and the density of the ads. Um, for, for everyone. Next chart, um, what we were looking at here was um, which g the games that had a high proportion of the revenue coming from ads. You know, it's obvious that these guys will be taking a much more aggressive approach. Um, they tend to come from the casual genre, but really interesting to us was that there was very limited segmentation used the, the ads tended to be served across most of the player base. And actually, a lot of these games have low DAU. We didn't know whether the low DAU was because the engagement rates were being impacted from the, uh, from the, from the, aggressive, the more aggressive ad serving. Um, 
it's too too strong a conclusion to to make that point directly. But certainly, what we what we see from the survey is that the more aggressive the approach, the more the engagement problems uh, become manifest. And so, there's certainly um, data and analytics should be used to balance engagement and add strategies so that your, your player engagement is not impacted in that way. We didn't have a, a high DAU game in the survey that um, had a, a very aggressive ad approach, which uh, I think is quite interesting in its own right. Next, we looked at the sorts of um, sophisticated strategies that the most confident advertisers used. Um, the most confident developers using ads, I should say. You know, very much a common approach was segmenting players and also not um, and, and not sending ad, serving ads to to paying players. As I said before, you know, it's, it's not quite that black and white from the work that we've we've done. We do see that ads can be, especially rewarded video, can be a good way of unlocking some in-app purchasers by giving them them experience of inventory at certain points in their gameplay. Um, that that certainly can provide a trigger for some people to turn into um, in-app purchasers um, and point them towards the store, point them towards the experience that they get from purchased inventory. Um, so it's not completely black and white in terms of keeping payers away from ads at all times. Um, so the most confident people um, in terms of their ad strategy, most confident developers, they actually had a cautious approach. They had lower revenue from ads. And the the actual confidence then was mainly concerned with making sure that the ads did not impact on engagement rates. This is this is one of the clear findings here that the the concern about engagement is, is so strong that developers would prefer to take a cautious approach, quite correctly, um, without the evidence to support a more aggressive approach. And, and make sure that engagement is not impacted by ads. So that is um, you know, a quick run through of some of the more significant dimensions in, in the survey and what, what the developer community is, is telling us. Um, and then I wanted to turn the conversation over um, to Dean Takahashi of VentureBeat and, and we can talk in a little bit more uh, in a little bit more depth about certain aspects of of ad strategy and some of the insights that we've um, we've generated uh, at Delta DNA. Thanks, Mark. Uh, nice presentation. Um, it, you know, it sounds like you're you're not saying something brand new to everybody here, but um, you're sort of reinforcing some things or reminding developers about about what they should do. And, you know, it seems like these these lessons are you know don't leave money on the table. They'll be too aggressive and optimize the ad strategy to the game design. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think you know, the conclusions are very clear. I mean, I think that you know, more interesting than the individual conclusions is what do we do about this situation and how do we get you know, the bulk of the developer community to a place where they know that they have got an ad strategy that's working for them, that is maximizing the ad revenue potential of their games, but it's doing no harm in terms of engagement. And I think you know, one of the clear points that comes across time and again uh, uh, to resolve this is in terms of using data, using analytics, segmenting the players into you know, behavioral groups and, and other interesting types of, of playing groups. And then really taking the 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 ad strategy from a you know a player's perspective. So if you've got a bunch of novice players, if you've got a bunch of expert players, then there are in-app purchase and ad strategies that that need to work for them. You know, I think the industry has been guilty of thinking about ads quite late in the development cycle, where as you know we see the best approaches being that engagement free-to-play mechanics, in-app purchase, and ad strategies are really 
it was thought about very early in the game design so that it's built into the whole experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Some um, uh, people may be stuck with that impression that in-app purchases are always going to be 90% of your business or more. Um, uh, but if we look at, like, say, you know, subscription TV versus, uh, you know, free broadcast TV, um, it, it's usually flipped the other way, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we 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 actually asked this question in the survey and um we see that ad revenue can be 20% of of um the in-game economy um but it can be up to 50% of the in-game economy and you know one of the things that really drives us forward at Delta DNA is to make sure that well, as many games as possible reach their their success you know their maximum success and if you are leaving that amount of, of money on the table, then we need to break through this uh, concern about ads impacting engagement and retention rates. So therefore, you know, using the data um, to to make smart decisions about ad strategies is, is vitally important. I think that you know, up to now, um, your know, developers have really found it hard in terms of just bandwidth and resource to manage, you know, a, a number of uh, relationships with, with several different ad networks to compile the data to decide what, you know, cascade you're going to deploy in terms of your, your ad networks and how you're, how you're going to or order them. You understand where their performance is good by format and by territory. You know, there's a lot of data and a lot of analytics required to, to do this well. So that's what really um, drove us to um, build the smart ads component of our, our toolkit, thinking about the players first, you know, who's ad responsive, who's in-app purchase responsive, but also supplying that independent mediation to get that you know, dynamic cascading, um, yeah. maximizing your CPMs, but also then making sure that um, our clients were able to evaluate the success of different ad strategies and move forward with, with clarity and, uh, and understanding. So you're you're trying to offload that that hard work from the developers and and sort of make it uh, easier for them to reach the the potential for the the ad revenue. Exactly. So you know if you're if you're a developer and you're sitting at um, you know you you don't deploy any ads until session ten, but you're wondering actually can I can I make more money by targeting particular players and starting the ads at session four? Um, can I improve the number of impressions by taking a more sophisticated approach? Can I you know, improve my revenue through doing that without doing any harm to engagement? That all sounds very attractive, but you know you've got a busy day and you know um, uh, you know a pretty focused team. It's very tough to to spend the time to to figure all of this stuff out. So that's where your know, smart ads comes in. We we've, we've done the hard figuring out um, for. For the developer community, uh, and making it a much more um, uh, intuitive um, and um, giving giving a structure to the ad strategy that really makes this stuff possible for you know even small developers to to do well. Yeah, but it's, uh, I guess I mean there, there's a lot of knowledge um, about free to play you know from the last five plus years here, but uh, I guess the the market itself is still very confusing. I mean, there's there's ad networks, there's uh, ad formats and territories that everybody has to figure out. There's loads of loads of dimensions to this. You know, w which ad networks are strong in different formats and different territories. You know, you have got um, to be able to to be confident that the impressions that you're sending out of your game to the to the, the ad networks are actually going to be fulfilled and they're going to be fulfilled in a you know technically solid way and the experience is, is not going to be compromised because of that. You need to make sure that you're maximizing your CPMs from the ad networks, which means that you know you're working it across a number of providers and you're you know, wanting to dynamically cascade um, your hierarchy to get the best CPMs and you're also wanting to take that feedback back into 
the analytics so that you know which ads are working, which players are being responsive, and you know also to make sure that the, the players that are are leaving, um, you're you're taking corrective action for the, for those guys as well if you're maybe being too aggressive on a, on a certain part of your playing base. So you know there's a lot to think about, um, but actually you know what we um, what we've done through the development of smart ads is put all of that data into one place so that um, it's it's easy to figure out this stuff and to manage your players over the whole of the economy. And we're really excited by that because you know, having that player perspective on the whole of the economy so you can blend in at purchase and ads to maximize your revenues means that you know, many more games can be successful. I guess we should uh, get to some audience questions soon, but um, yeah, any, any other um, thoughts that uh, uh, you have about uh, more lessons for developers here, and, and any other, um, also maybe concrete examples of uh, just talking to developers that uh, come to mind? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think that you know, developers, I mean, in talking to developers time and again, we see a real... Um, Concern that they 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 kind of know that they're leaving money on the table, but they don't know what you know in terms of being slightly more aggressive on their ad strategy, what to do next because they don't know if taking a step forward in terms of levels of aggression of that ad strategy, what the what the overall impact is going to be on that. So this is where you know A/B testing is important. If you're moving your ads from ad serving from session 10 to session 6. Um, are you going to do that for everybody? Are you going to do that for non-payers? Are you going to do that for people that you have previously seen being ad responsive? Are you going to do it for novice players rather than experts? You know, all of these um, all of these questions come into play. And it's, it's, you know, it's no wonder that developers are um, lacking confidence in terms of making these decisions and calling these shots because, you know, if you get it wrong, it has a massive impact on on your game success. Um, so this is where you know I think the the industry has got to make a breakthrough in terms of using this data smartly. And you know there you know we're convinced and we've proven that there's there's more money um, in the game through through more sophisticated ad strategies. And money is being left on the table. And it's you know we see it as our job to support support the developer community to make move forward with confidence in this area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I could I could see some developers who um, sort of have a a very hardcore reputation. Um, you know, just may not uh, care as much about that. I mean, they 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 may feel like um, you know taking a religious stand on advertising and just not showing any of it. Um, yeah, and, and that, that's, that's perfectly legitimate. I think that, you know, there are there are certain types of games that, you know, ads would be too jarring um, for the for the player community, which might be a, a more sort of hardcore um, traditional um, player community. But the, the reality is that um, the vast majority of free-to-play games require ads to... To be profitable, and therefore, you know, we we should we should do it the smart way, and you know, by knowing the players and being responsive to the players, then you know, that's one way of unlocking your game success. So, you know, it it really is, you know, applying um, thinking of the player first is something that we always do at Delta DNA. We don't um, we don't impose on the game design things that will will jar. Um, so that you know the game, the game's overall success is is at risk. You know what we're what we're doing here is is balancing some quite contrasting mechanics in terms of engagement and compulsion and monetization into a in, into a, a gaming environment that you know is is rewarding and fun for you know the different types of players that are that are in the base. Wendy, do you want to manage any questions? Absolutely.
absolutely. I'd love to. But first, I'd love to hear from the audience. Um, we have a couple of audience polls, and I'm curious to find out what they think. Uh, what is, audience, I've launched a poll right now, and it should have floated down in front of the um, live video, the video screen. Um, what is the best way to get FTP advertising right? And I know that it's, it's also included in our survey, but the options here are overall strategy, good formatting, player retention, or something else I'll explain in the Q&A comments. And while the audience is voting, um, Dean and, and what do you think? Is, you've, I know that you've seen a lot of um, FTP gameplay in, in your uh, storied history as a VB Insight uh, game, games reporter. What, what would you think is, is the best way to get it right? How have you seen it working well? Um, well, you know, at, you know, when a game is loading at the beginning of a game, I, I certainly don't mind the extra second or two that it, that it might take to, to get hit with an ad at that point. And, you know, more as a player, um, uh, it is okay, you know, now and then to, to see a banner come across as well. And then, you know, when I when I need to make a choice as to whether I'm going to spend some money on, on something or watch a rewarded, you know, video of some kind, uh, then, you know, definitely, you know, I understand as a sort of a better, veteran player that I'm, I'm making choices there that will, you know, suit me at the time, I think. Um, you know, part of it is how much patience do I have and, and how much do I really want to get something in the game. True story. Um, I, uh, I I play a lot of, of free to play games too myself, and I um, I'm thinking back to the, the ads that really bug me, and I think they're the one. I think the banner ads bug me the most, but um, I really don't mind seeing an ad between sessions. Um, I play a lot of little quick, you know, quick in and out, uh, you know, kind of like Plants vs Zombies that kind of thing. And uh, Candy Crush Saga is a good example of of that, where you're playing a board and then then you finish, and you can continue playing, but you have to watch the ad. And I think that it really does speak to overall strategy. But Mark, what are you seeing? Um, so I, I I think that you know there's a there's an interesting value exchange here, and and part of part of this part of this strikes me is that players. In, in the free to play um, environment, are used to you know having are starting to get used to having to give something back to the game developer. You know I think you know one of the things that strikes us is that you know, games are marketplaces, um, and you know consumers of games they they're starting to realise that you can't have everything for free or else you know the next the next set of games are in jeopardy. So. That's why you know, some players will um, you know, happily purchase in app in app inventory to um, augment their experience. But I think more and more there's a realization that by consuming ads, then players are giving something back to developers that allows us to sustain you know, the next the next set of games. And um, you know that's an important part of this. Well said. And, you know, our audience, thank you, audience, for voting. Our audience is saying 75% of our audience is saying it's overall strategy. Um, 25% is player retention. I think that's interesting. Um, I, I actually notice, because obviously we think about this a lot here at Venture Rate, I notice it when, uh, when I uh, have retention strategies applied, and I actually, I actually enjoy that. Um, you know, I, I like it when they, they give me a bonus, um, hey, you know, you're, you're having a hard time getting through this level. Um, so I, I think that's a interesting strategy as well, and I think it, it might be undervalued a little bit. But um, yeah, yeah it, it's it's a tough nut. But I think, as Dean said, you know, we're we're kind of changing. We're kind of in a creative um, evolution in this space. Well, let let me let me show you let me show you another another couple okay. of slides which try and pull yeah, this together because I think you know, it parallels it parallels some of the stuff that we're getting through the um, the audience feedback. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll just I'll just move on to um, to this this slide here. Excuse me. Um, developer recommendations. Now, this 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 is 
you know, our, our attempt to pull together the main aspects of the findings in, in the survey. And we asked developers what they'd find would be very useful in terms of unlocking um, successful ad monetization. And you can see that we've ranked a, 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 a number of comments here. First off, um, in terms of the, the highest percentage that would be very useful, is calculating the effect of advertising on player retention. So just as you're, you're starting to get some feedback in the, the votes online, you know, this is this is really resonating. There is a, there is overall a concern that a too aggressive ad strategy is going to impact on retention. Now it's all very well saying that, but testing it and trying to find the right balance, people need to take that first step. Um, you know, using A/B testing, uh, analyzing the responses, and making sure that you know uh, developers are getting to a good balance. Um, between engagement and monetization. It's going to be a constant balance, but using analytics to find where the where the place is in the game to, to, to have that right balance is, is really important. Uh, the other the other next one down is predicting players who are likely to pay. So you know and, and you know, we're doing quite a lot of work in this area, giving our clients predictive tools to put players into segments early in the gameplay. You, you saw at the start of the presentation different ways where we can tag players as being novice players or expert players and then start very early on a, a different treatment strategy, different personalization strategy for those guys. And certainly we can use um, predictive modeling and the the event data, the rich event data, to make early predictions on whether players are going to be in that purchase responsive, whether they're going to be ad responsive, and then you know drive our strategies from, from that level of insight. Um, the next three then are, are, are more to do with data. Knowing player engagement data for each ad served, control of ad frequency, um, and including ad revenue into player lifetime value estimates so that you know the value of acquisition spend can be very um, directly assessed, um, making sure that you paid for acquisition is profitable by considering not only in-app purchase but also ad revenues. So that kind of ties together a lot of what we've been talking about into a pretty neat wish list from developers as to you know, what would make their lives easier in terms of taking these first steps to more sophisticated ad strategies. So just carrying on to, to round things up, um, you know, we've already talked about Free to play is a constant balance between retention, ad monetization, and in app purchase monetization, and that data really helps to unravel this. And one of the things that we, we do um, talk to our, our, our clients a lot about is to think of your game as a marketplace. Obviously, the creative idea, the, um, the, the game design, the, the thoughtful, um, balancing of the, the different free-to-play mechanics, um, excellent development and um, content within the game, they're all vital. But if you start to think of your game as a marketplace for consumers, that you're delivering a fun and entertainment, but you're also wanting you know, a return for that in terms of ad consumption, in-app purchase consumption, then you're boiling those um, those strategies into the the very fabric of the the way that you approach free to play is is essential, and that that gives you the best possible chance of creating one environment where the monetization mechanics and the game mechanics work well together. And you know we're seeing some real great examples in the industry of 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 ways of doing that without um, without jarring the experience. So I just wanted to round up um, to talk a little bit about the smart ads component within the Delta DNA platform. You know, having taken the survey, having talked to our clients, you know, taking soundings from the market, you know, we saw that there was a real big opportunity here to use data more intelligently to drive some of this decision making around ad strategies. So using predictive modeling to split out in app purchase and ad responsive players player profiling and segmentation to understand the different behaviors and you know, how they respond to different formats of, of ads, thinking about placement and density, 
and getting some transparent, holistic view of the, the feedback in terms of ad responsiveness. And then dynamically cascading the ad networks so that you've got truly independent mediation um, driving the selection of, uh, of, of how different impressions are fulfilled. That obviously maximizes the, um, the ad revenues and the CPMs. So combining all of those things together, we think takes the industry to the next obvious step in terms of this important part of the, of, of the game economy. Um, and you know, optimizing optimizing ads, improving the the revenue that's generated from those ads means that you know, many more games will be be super successful. So just to just to finish up and, and round up, we've got we've got a you know we've got uncertainty in approach, and that shows um, a, a lack of data. Um, because there's uncertainty, then developers are naturally cautious and concerned about uh, in their ad strategy, and then the, their, their fear of uh, of harming player engagement. Um, uh, the the reason that players are cautious is um, a lack of transparency in terms of taking these first steps to a more sophisticated approach, and also having you know bandwidth and resource issues to to deal with the, the different dimensions of insight that are required. But really now, you know, we're seeing um, toolkits um, being available like Smart Ads from Delta DNA that really start to solve these problems and, and as I said, make, make sure that developers um, have the best possible chances of their games reaching their full potential. Nice job, Mark. So now is the time where the audience can uh, go ahead and feel free to ask questions of our panel. And to reminder to do that, click the questions button or ask a question button on top of the video panel and go ahead and type your questions in there. And we're, we're ready to take those questions. While you're considering that, I have another audience poll here. And this has to do with a lot of what Mark has covered as well. What type of ads are the most effective in free-to-play games, native, banner, interstitial, rewarded, or something else, and you can go ahead and fill in, uh, let us know what the something else is through the questions um, option. And Mark, I know that you've studied this. What type of ads did your study find were the most effective? Do you so, happen to have that by off the top yeah. of the head? Yeah, we we actually have seen over the last 12, 12 18 months the the industry change. Um, you know, interstitial was you know by far the most um, you know, common format going back 12 months ago, and that was combined with banners. But you know, really over the last 12 months, we've seen a growing um, pool on rewarded video. And rewarded, rewarded video is, is neat because you know it it does give players back something for um, you know their consumption of the ad. It is it can be complementary to the the game envir- um, the the game experience. You know there are certain types of players that are actually very responsive to rewarded video from from our analysis, uh, including novice players that you know, appreciate the extra resource that consuming the rewarded video gives them. Um, you know, grinders will, um, you know, those players that will will never do an app purchase will um, consume ads. And, but then, you know, then you, you obviously need to balance the, um, the format um, with the player type. Um, and, and so that, that's a change, that's a changing dynamic. Um, but a movement towards rewarded video is something that we've seen um, certainly over the last 12 months. And that's actually aligning with what our audience is saying as well. It's 100%, um, believe it or not, uh, from our audience who's voted. So 100% have said rewarded video is the way to go. And unfortunately, I apologize for those of you who are um, having a problem getting your question in. Uh, we are unfortunately out of time. So I want to thank, um, a big thanks to Dean Takahashi, who it, well, took the time today to join us um, from his uh, a typical role running Games Beat and Games uh, Thread on our 
Venture Beat site. And also thanks so much to Mark Robinson, the CEO of Delta DNA, who was able to bring this data to us and um, discuss this topic. I know it's a vital topic for a lot of our Venture Beat readers, so thank you so much. And thank you, audience, for joining us today. Just as a reminder, this webinar will be available to watch again on demand about, a, about an hour after uh, we're finished recording. And you can, of course, download um, a copy of the survey results as well as a copy of this deck in the attachments button up above the video window. Once again, thanks to our sponsor, Delta DNA, who was able to bring this content to you. And thank you, audience, for joining us today. Just a reminder, this content is 100% copyright by Delta DNA and VentureBeat. If that is the case, the individual opinions are, are um, solely the responsibility of the individual speakers, and the content is solely the responsibility of Delta DNA and VentureBeat. I'm Wendy Shukert. I'm signing off for VentureBeat. And I want you to have a great day and enjoy the rest of the week.